Hi, I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop. Welcome to another episode of our classic and vintage series where we take traditional blocks and make them a little bit more modern. Today we're making the Carolina Lily block, which is a really fun block. It's pieced and applique, so I've got lots of applique tips for you. For piecing, I'm gonna use Aurifil 2021, and for applique, I'm gonna be using the Aurifil 80 weight, which is really nice for applique, and I'm using color 2900. And for this, you're just gonna use your general sewing supplies, but for um, the applique, you will need a half inch bias tape maker. So let's get started. The Carolina Lily block is a completely free pattern. You can download it back quarter shop. If you want to turn it into a quilt, we also have a low price pattern for you that is going to work for several sizes. So let's get started. We'll start with the fabric J rectangle and two fabric C squares. We're going to draw a line on the wrong side of the fabric C square from corner to corner. I'm using a friction pen since the ink will disappear with heat later. So I'm going to draw those lines. To build your flying geese, you will put your square on the left end of your rectangle. I'd like to put a pin in right here. You're going to stitch from corner to corner. Once you're done, you will trim a quarter inch away from your stitch line and press and that is going to give you half of your flying geese and then you will add the other side stitch on the line trim a quarter inch away and press and you're going to make four flying geese for each block so now we're going to move on to the flower parts i've got a fabric a square and a fabric E square. And if you're looking at this fabric and you love it, it's the At Home Collection by Bonnie and Camille. And the red and green is just beautiful. So on the wrong side of the fabric E, you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. Place it on one of the corners of the red. And I like to put two pins in here to keep it in place. You're gonna stitch on the drawn line, trim a quarter inch away, and you're gonna have a corner unit. And it looks just like this. You will take a flying geese from the previous step, add it to the left end, so you've got a lot of red right here, and press, and you're gonna make one of these units. So we're gonna keep building this flower. You're gonna take a fabric L square and a red flying geese, stitch a quarter inch seam, and press according to the pattern. And if you're looking at our pattern and you follow it, all your seams will nest if you follow the arrows on pressing. This is what that looks like. You'll take your unit we just made in the previous step. We're gonna stitch that with a quarter inch seam and press. And it's gonna look like this. And then you will add a fabric eye rectangle to the right. Stitch a quarter inch seam and press. And then to the bottom, you're gonna add a fabric H rectangle, stitch a quarter inch seam and press. And this is going to be your corner flower unit. So let's move to build the remaining flowers. So now we're gonna move to our next flower. You're gonna make green flying geese using fabric K and fabric F. You're gonna use the same method we used with our red flying geese. And when you turn it, it is exactly the same. So we've got that unit done. We will take a fabric B rectangle, take a fabric K square that we've drawn a line from corner to corner on. You'll stitch directly on this line, trim a quarter inch away, and this is what you have. You're gonna add a fabric K on the other corner stitch and trim and you've got your large petal unit you're going to make two of each of these and then we can build our next unit so we're on our last carolina lily unit you're going to take fabric l squares attach them to your green flying geese and press and it will go right here then you're going to add your petal unit and you just wanna make sure that your white is going this direction 
and not this direction. So you'll just pay attention to that placement. And then you're gonna have a red flying geese that goes the other direction, fabric L squares, stitch with a quarter inch seam, and it looks like this. It looks kind of like a little rocket. So um, you're gonna stitch those together, and this is your unit, and it looks really pretty when you put it into your quilt because it goes two different directions and it looks totally different. So let's build our block. So now we're gonna build our block. You're gonna be putting your original unit here, your two units we made second here, and you're just gonna watch the placement of the green and the red, add a fabric G square, stitch with a quarter inch seam, press, and stitch your remaining seam. And it's going to look just like this. And now we're gonna have fun doing some applique. Now we're gonna start making our leaves. You're gonna take a fabric D square, a creative grids ruler and it's really important that you cut this on the bias if you don't cut your strips on the bias they will not um, bend for the flower block so i'm going to use a 45 degree line on my ruler and just cut a diagonal line and from there i'm going to cut three one inch strips so we're going to do one one more and then i'll probably just flip this and have one and then we can cut them down into smaller strips but i'm actually going to cut them after we use the bias tape maker so we're going to get out our iron and we're going to start that now we're going to use a clover half inch bias tape maker this makes this process go really fast. You'll take one of your strips, put it inside, go through, and then you just kind of push it with your fingers gently. And you pull that point. And when you're putting it through, you want it to stay even. So you just want to keep it kind of center. And then I'm going to take the tip of my iron and I'm going to iron as I unroll. So you can actually just iron and pull. And see how pretty that's coming out? So I'm going to do that on all three. It's going to come out really nice and pretty. And you can see on the back, it's perfect. It just folds that in. If you don't have a bias tape maker, you could try to do this um, by hand. It just takes a lot longer. And so you can see when I put my iron on it, I did use steam and I went really nice and slow and tried not to move my iron too much so that it wouldn't um, distort the seam. So I'm going to do all three of these. Okay, so I have all three bias tape made, and now I'm gonna use my June Taylor mat and just trim it down to the size it says. It will be big enough to where we're gonna trim down later. So this does not have to be exact in any way. So first we need a 12 and a half. So I'll cut that one. And then we need two six and a half. And now I'm going to show you how you applique this down on your block. Okay, so your longer stem is going to go right here. And your two smaller stems are going to kind of curve. And so what I like to do is use an iron and just curve this slightly on your ironing board. You just kind of play with it and just get it to curve just slightly and this will help you on your next step. 
So it just kind of starts the curve. And since you cut on the bias, it's going to bend like this, it's bendable. If you don't start on the bias, it is not gonna be bendable. So when we put this down, you can see that it looks pretty nice. And so we're gonna get some applique pins and we're gonna start pinning down. So now I have this laid out and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use clover applique pins. They're very dull on the end, so if you poke yourself, it's not gonna hurt as much as if you use a sharp pin. And I'm just gonna start pinning in place. And as you pin, you can readjust. But I'm gonna kinda just put it in place, take my time, and then see how I like it, and then adjust from there. And I always use applique pins when I'm appliquing. It looks like this one is going a little bit smoother than the other one. It's laying a little bit nicer, so I'll just put applique pins maybe every inch. And for this, I'm actually gonna draw a line with a friction pin to have a guide. So I'm actually gonna draw that really quick. That just kind of keeps me straight and it'll disappear with heat later. That's just gonna kinda help me on the center. And then when we get here, we can probably trim. And so I want my other one to replicate the same look. So you kinda just have to play with it a little bit, which is why I really like the applique pins. And I'm just leaving a little bit to hang off so that I have enough room to fold under. I'm using applique pins instead of regular pins since they are not as sharp and you won't poke yourself as much and they're also shorter. If you use regular pins, you're gonna, you're gonna definitely poke yourself. So that looks pretty straight. I think this one actually needs to move a little bit. So I'm a little bit picky about this, a little bit fussy about this, and I'm gonna kind of mess with it, take my time, make sure I really like it before I start stitching anything down. So I've got that down, and then what I'm gonna do is put this one down, and I'm gonna kind of pin it a couple of times because I've got to trim my lower ones. I've got to trim under here. I've got to figure out where this is going to intersect. So I'm gonna pin down this one just for placement. And if you look on the back, if you line up right there, if you wanna make sure you're right on the crease, just to stay in the center, you don't have to do that though. Okay, so now you can see that it's coming in and I'm just gonna trim this. So that it goes underneath. Pin it down. And then I'm gonna trim this one. and they just fit in really nice and snug. And so I've got everything pinned. Now, if you don't like to pin, you can use applique glue. I like to use the Sue Daily applique glue. It's not too sticky. Um, I don't feel like I need any glue right now, but I do always have glue out just in case. So I'm gonna set aside my pins and my glue and I am going to be using Arful Color 2900. When I applique, I always use 80 weight. So what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna be using applique needles. I'm using the Clover Black Gold needles. When you're appliquing, you just want to make sure you use applique needles. You can use any needles you like. And you want to thread your needle before you cut it off because that is the correct direction. So, an applique needle is gonna have a really small eye. 
so it's much harder to thread. So I've got it threaded. Then I'm going to cut it, and that is where I knot it. That's how you remember if you've got it the right direction. So I'm just going to put a little simple knot in there. I'm going to move everything out of the way and show you how I applique. So when I applique, I usually put my piece on a slant, and I am going to start right here underneath. So what I will do is I will roll my piece so I can put my hand on it. I'm going to put my needle under the piece to start. So my knot goes on the very back. Some people don't do that, but, but I like to do it that way. I think it's easier. So you're going to just start. I've got about 18 inches on my thread. And then I'm going to just start stitching. So what I like to do on applique is come out right on the edge of your fabric. So right in that crease of the green fabric, go down in the white fabric, and you don't see your stitch. And so I go about every eighth of an inch, come up in the green, right in the crease, go down in the white, right underneath the green, and the goal is to not see your stitches. So you want to use a really thin, but strong thread. That's why I'm using 80 weight Aurafil. And then I'm gonna just kind of stitch how I would at home where it's a little bit faster. So you can see how I travel. So I just take little tiny bites. And if I ever see my stitch, I'll just unpick it because the goal of this is for it to be invisible. Now, of course, you could machine applique and when you machine applique, you could use an invisible stitch, you could use a blanket stitch, you could use a straight stitch. I am not great at machine applique, so that's why I'm showing you hand applique, because that's what I would do at home. And we do have lots of videos from guests that show you how to machine applique, so you could watch those also if you're interested in using your machine. Now see, on this one, my needle's a little bit too far this way. So I want it, I'm going to pull that out because I want it to be right in that crease. And by using that bias tape maker, I've got a really nice crease. And so I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to show you how at the top, what I do at the top. So I'm just going to go really fast. So I remove the applique pins as I get to them. And as I get over here, I'm gonna kind of pull this in so I can get a really nice grip without distorting the fabric. And if you just roll it, it's not going to crease too much. And I just like to have a really firm grip. I try to keep my left hand sturdy and straight and just move with my right hand. So on this piece, I'm going to go all the way until I hit the white. And I'm going to put a stitch right at the very edge of the white. And now I'm going to turn this down this direction right here and so that it looks like a seam and I'm going to finger press this and from there I'm going to trim a quarter inch 
away. So you're just really careful, just trim about a quarter inch away so you don't have too much bulk at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna hold this in place. And when I'm stitching this, I'm just trying to put the green right next to the green but not have any white show. So it looks, so if you need to have your green slightly over the green, that's totally fine too. That's gonna make it look better than if you see any of your white. And it will just look like you pieced it with the machine in there, they won't know any different. And when you're trying to pick an applique thread, you will want your thread to match the piece the green, so like the applique piece, not your background. So when you get to that corner again, I'm gonna put one more stitch right in the corner, maybe two because that's gonna anchor it before I have to go the other way. And so you can see you've got a little tail coming out I'm just going to push it in with my needle. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but you just kind of, you don't want to cut that off because if you cut that off, it's going to fray. So you definitely don't want to cut that off. You just want to tuck it under there. And when you're stitching right here, you might have to do a couple more stitches than normal just to kind of anchor it and really hide it. and then you're just gonna stitch down. The other end. So to finish this, you're just gonna wanna finish this stem and also do your other shorter stem and then you will do your long stem. And then when you're done, you'll just trim off the little corner and this is how your block will look. And I just wanted to show you this one. This is a version that was machine applique. So we're gonna zoom in and show you how a straight stitch would be used. And if you're machine applique, applique glue might be a little bit easier to use than applique pins. We hope you give the Carolina Lily block a try. It's really a show stopper. And if you have questions on applique or piecing, just ask them below and I will answer. And there is a link in the description box to everything we use today. And I would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find new quilting tips every week. See you next time.